That should disappear, but it's not. Okay, calculations. Let's have a look and see what happens in... Hey, look, it's not working. Yay. Go away. There it goes. <laughs> so, it's a good start to a presentation. So, why are we doing this? Basically, you might be asked to calculate file sizes or transmission uh, speeds or transmission times. Um, this is going to help you work it all out. So, realistically, there are six or seven generic um, uh, formulas you need to know. They're all approximately similar and you'll get all of them in this presentation and in this worksheet you're going to get at the end so that you can have a bit of a play. On the upside, you can use your calculator. So this is one exam in computing where you can use a calculator. IP team software you can't. Um, just as, a, as an aside, the good news, you can't calculate the size of a compressed image. There's too many variables, it's not possible to do. You can, however, calculate uncompressed <coughs> images, uncompressed and compressed audio. I'm going to show you how to do that, it's pretty cool. And you can calculate the size of an uncompressed video, which we will do just to demonstrate a point about video compression. You will never be asked to do it during an exam. So don't panic too much. Okay, now, before we start, Computers store data in digital format, ones and zeros. Who knows why? And yes, you should know why, you should know why, and so should you, and if you answer, I'm going to get cranky at you. But anyone else, why do computers store data in binary, ones and zeros? You should know. Uh, because ones can represent on and zeros can represent off, and because computers use uh, mic micro... No, it starts with T. I know it starts with T. T, I did a thing. Trans, Z. trans, I know it's trans something. Transistors. That's it. Right, so computer, and, and Josh is completely right. Com computers use transistors in CPUs. A transistor is a really simple electronic device. It has two states, on or off. One or zero, plus or minus, charged or discharged. It doesn't, it's not half charged like a battery. It's charged or it's discharged. And as a result of this, CPUs process the data that a, that a transistor can, can deal with. Okay? So transistors have two states, on or off. And because transistors make CPUs, that's all a CPU can do. Now, if you want to know more information, come and join a software design class. Ask Casey, Francisco and Melinda. I'm sure they'll encourage you to join software design. And just for the record, if you're listening to this later on or watching this on YouTube, they all shook their heads vehemently. Okay, so one bit is a single one or a zero. It's a very small number. Eight bits is a byte, and we work in bytes because it's a more useful value. Just a bit more about this. As an example though, and this becomes important because we're gonna start talking about color theory in a second. If I've got three bits of data, I can have a total of two to the third power, two times two times two, different combinations. These are they. So if I have three bits of data, three ones and zeros, I only have eight combinations of zeros and ones. Now that becomes important because when I start thinking about colour, I assign colour to combinations of ones and zeros. Oh, in fact, look what I'm about to do. These can be assigned to different things, for example, colours. So if I've only got three bits of data, I've only got eight combinations, I can only have eight colours. Now I can choose what those eight colours are, but in this colour swatch I've chosen eight fairly colourful blobs. Thank you, Google. Okay, so maybe I'm assigning 000 to the light blue and 001 to the, is that a yellow or an orange? 010 to the orange and 011 to the pink, etc., etc., etc. So that when I go to render colour, the CPU is seeing ones and zeros, but what it shows me on screen are those colours. And that's really important. Just remember that everything you do on your computer whether it be the notes that you're typing now, the operating system that's running that, the, the Discord chat you're going to have tonight saying what a horrible lesson this was, the game you're playing later on where you go and blow up a whole bunch of zombies, because why not? It's all the CPU is seeing a bunch of ones and zeros. It's not seeing a zombie running at you at full throttle while you take a headshot. It's seeing a bunch of ones and zeros and processing that. Okay, let's have a bit more detail about bits. One bit has one option. If I have two bits to, to represent data, I can have four options, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. 
Take a deep breath. And I'm not going to do every option available here because it will drive you insane. If I have eight data bits, I have two to the eighth power, that's two times two, which is four times two is eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256 different options. Eight zeros, seven zeros and a one, seven zero, whatever. Up to eight ones, and every combination in between, I can have 256 different combinations. Let's ramp it up. If I have more data bits of something, I'll have a bigger file. Uh, it will have more detail, but also have a much bigger file size, and therefore be, be more to process. That's something important as well. And as you saw in the previous slide, uh, we assign bits to pixel color, pixels and color. That's how we do it in, in, in images. I'll show you how it works in audio during this presentation. So again, don't panic if you don't have all this detail. It's just trying to get to the point that the ultimate thing you need to know and what you need to have written down, computers process data in binary format, zeros and ones. Everything is down into binary. More bits to assign quality, means higher quality, bigger file. Let's carry on. Now, this is where most people get lost for the, for the first time. And it's because we are sold a lie. The lie we get sold is that um, the way science works is the way computing works. But when it comes to megabytes and kilobytes and terabytes and whatever else, it's not quite true. So first up, one bit, one or zero, very small. Eight bits, which is called a byte. And serious trivia here, Computers sometimes use four bits, which is called a nibble. I'm not joking. A nibble is half a byte. No, with an I. But seriously, so one bit, useless unit, too small. Eight bits, better, because we can start to think about it more reasonably. Every character that you're seeing on this screen is one byte in size. I can render any character on this screen using one byte, eight bits of data. It's called ASCII. Come and join us in Software Design for more information. Again, one byte is actually rather small. Doesn't really give much information away. So we use a kilobyte or a thousand bytes. Kilo being the prefix for 1,000, like a kilogram, 1,000 gram, or a kilometer, 1,000 meters. All good? So when we see a kilobyte, it's a thousand bytes. When we see a kilometre, it's a thousand metre. Metres, actually. So it's a useful unit. Your Word documents that you're working on are normally measured in kilobytes until they become full of pictures and then get working in megabytes. However, and this is where the calculations get confused, a kilobyte is actually not a thousand. It's just over, it's a thousand and twenty-four. And to work out why, Multiply two by 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 two. And just trust me, two to the tenth power is a thousand and twenty-four. So when you're talking about a kilobyte, you're actually talking about a binary kilobyte, which is a thousand and twenty-four, just over. And therefore one megabyte is a thousand and twenty-four kilobytes. Now there's a point coming to this. A gigabyte is a thousand and twenty-four megabytes. A terabyte is 1,024 gigabytes. And this explains why your one, turn of one terabyte external hard drive, who's got a one terabyte external hard drive? I'm sure most of you do. It's 964 gigabytes. The computer reads it as 964 gigabytes. Where do 36 gigabytes go? There. You get sold a lie. And it's quite frustrating. So, when you're doing your calculations, this slide is here for one reason. <coughs> When you're doing your calculations, use 1,024, not 1,000. And I'll show you when you're doing calculations. Okay, so let's start working out what properties we need to know about images to do this calculation. We need three values. So when you're calculating the size of an uncompressed image, now, note what I said there, uncompressed. This is a bitmap image, not a JPEG, not a PNG, not a GIF, bitmap. We need the image resolution. So resolution across and down. So far, so good. How big is the image? So look at the screens around you. They're all 10, uh, 1920 by 1080. So 1080p. So we know the resolution across, 1920 pixels. 
we know the resolution up and down, 1080 pixels. It's really simple. That's the hard part, number of bits to describe colour. Because if I have 16 million colours, I don't have 16 million bits. I have 24 bits because all the different combinations. 2 to the 24th power equals 16.7 million. So when you're doing the simplest calculation, for example, imagine a 24-bit colour image, resolution 1024 by 768, which is a standard. That 24-bit means 2 to the 24th power, which if you do the calculation, I'm sure somebody will, will come out at 16.7 million colours. I think this is a table. Yep. All right. Again, you do need to know this table. You don't need to write it down. But you do need to know this table. Because during an exam, if the question says, calculate the size of a file that has this many colours, they might say it's got 65,500 colours. And so therefore, when you do your calculation, you of course use 65,500. No, you don't. You use 16. Right? So you use the number of bits on the left-hand column, not the maximum number of colours. Let's do the calculation. Again, you don't need to write this down, but you will need to know it. So the calculation, really simple. To calculate the size of the file is the resolution times the bit depth uh, times 8 times 1024 times 1024. Let's explain the, the denominator first. So remember we have to convert our bits to bytes. Oh, why do we have to convert bits to bytes? It's really simple. Look at the top part there. It says bit depth. That tells you your units, bits. So that 8 converts bits to bytes. That 1024 bytes to kilobytes. That 1024 kilobytes to megabytes. That's one of the standard equations, and that is always the standard denominator. And you'll find the answer there is 1024 times 768 times 24. Divided by all of that, comes up to 2.2 megabytes. That's, I think, the first question in the worksheet you're going to get. So don't panic. As I said, you're going to get this presentation so you can sneak back and have a look. Any questions so far? Look of stunned silence. <laughs> it gets worse. Try this on for size. Now, this has got the answer in it already, so therefore, have a go. An image whose resolution is 1920 by 1080 contains 4 billion colours. So the first question is, what is the bit depth? Let's go back to this. 4 billion colours, so it's 32 bit. Okay. Let's go forward and find it again. So your calculation will be what? 1920 by 1080 by 32 divided by 8 times 1024 times 1024. And if you do that calculation, you should come up at 7.9 megabytes. So look at the screens around you. They're all 1080p. Every frame that is drawn of the screen is 7.9 megabytes in size. And that gets refreshed 60 times a minute, a second. Frame buffers aren't in the syllabus, though. So. Okay. Is anyone panicking yet? Only a small nod? That's okay. That's it. This isn't too hard. All right, so now, audio. So we've done, we've done images. That's the standard formula for an image Resolution times bit depth divided by all that nonsense. There it is there. Okay. So now looking at audio. You can, com you can work out two different values for audio. You can work out the size of an uncompressed audio file, that is to say wave audio or CD audio. And you can also calculate the size of MP3, compressed audio. So the second presentation I'm doing will go into more detail about what this sample rate is and how it's calculated. We'll also talk about the sample quality, although unfortunately the syllabus has a very, very awful description for sample quality. They just call it sample size. Anyway, so we need to know the sample rate. How many samples get taken per second? And you'll find in the other presentation that the number is a weird number, but it's based upon 
what our ears can pick up. Sample quality, higher number, more bits, so higher sample rate, sorry, higher sample bit rate, sample quality, I should say, sample bit quality. The higher that number, the better. If you go 24-bit, you have more data that you can write per sample, which means you have a higher quality image. Once again, second presentation explains that one a little better because it's got some diagrams in it. We also need to know how long the song is going to be or the, the audio is going to be in seconds. We need one more thing, the number of channels. Now, if you think about it, you all, most of you walked in here wearing earphones. Your earphones have two outlets, two outputs, so two channels. If you have a mobile phone and you're listening to that, it's got one channel, so it's mono. Yes? But then again, if you go home and you turn on your amplifier and crank up the stereo and you've got six speakers sitting around your home, you'll have 5.1. Oh, sorry. Go back, go back, go back. So 5.1. The point one denotes a bass bin, by the way. So you might have a really cool uh, amplifier at home and you might have nine speakers around your house or around your living room. That's 7.2. Again, 0.2 means you've got two bass bins and seven other speakers. If you've got 7.2, you'll have a front bass bin, a rear bass bin. That's the 0.2. Front left, front right, front centre. Middle left, middle right, back left, back right, and there's your seven speakers. That's a full surround system. And a lot of Blu-rays will give you 7.2 surround sound, which is really cool fun. So the number of channels is, is important. If I have one discrete channel only, mono, which would be, imagine, a telephone, two channels, headphones, six channels, your home theatre, if you've got one. And you can also have up to nine. Okay, let's do the calculation. This one you should see is gonna wind up with a much bigger file. But it's the same basic concept. We had the sample rate times the sample quality times the length in seconds times the number of channels. Now, you people who do science will understand this a lot easier than people who don't. The sample quality in this equation gives me an answer in bits. Go back to the start of the presentation, we talked about bits and bytes and how to convert between bits and bytes and kilobytes and megabytes. This answer gives me an answer in, this equation, sorry, gives me an answer in bits. Sample quality is 16 bit. That's why at the bottom of the equation, I'm converting from bytes, bits to bytes, the eight, to, mega, to kilobytes, which is the first 1024, to megabytes, which is the second 1024. That's why the denominator's there. And all of these equations, say for one, work in the same way. You give an answer in bits, you've got to get it to megabytes. And I think when we go looking at this, let's pick CD quality audio. So if you have recorded Foley for your projects, you may well have recorded in uh, uncompressed CD quality audio. By default, 44.1 kilohertz. Now again, look at that big K there, kilo. 44.1 kilohertz, meaning the number in your calculation is not going to be 44.1, it's going to be 44,100. So a hertz, for those of you who haven't scienced for a while, is the number of cycles per second number of times an event occurs. So 44.1 kilohertz is 44,100 times every second. This microphone that is recording this presentation is recording 44,100 samples every second. That's a lot. 16 bit is the quality of the audio. So if it was 8 bit, it'd be lower quality. 24 bit would be higher quality. But obviously if I have a lower quality recording, so it's 8-bit instead of 16-bit, it will be a lower quality sound. If I'm recording in 24-bit, it'll be a much higher quality sound, naturally. And stereo, so the number of channels is two. Look at that. That's a lot of crunching there. 44,100 times 16, which is the bit rate, times 60, which is the length of the audio. So it says a one minute. Remember, this is always going to be done in seconds. Because why seconds? 44.1 kilohertz, 44,100 cycles per second. That's why I'm working in seconds. Times two for stereo, divided by whatever, whatever, whatever. 10.1 megabytes per minute of uncompressed CD quality audio. Not bad. 
It's a good reference point too. It's actually a nice reference point because when you're calculating audio sizes, if you can keep that number in mind, 10.1 per minute for CD, you think to yourself, hang on, my answer is 100 megabytes for a minute, something's wrong, and you might be able to self-adjust. Okay, compressed audio. You can work out the size of an MP3 file. This, I, I have never seen this one in an exam. I don't expect to see it in the exam. It's just a nice little bit of fluff. This is much easier. You need to know two things only. Encoding, bit rate, and length of audio. So you know when you download a song from the iTunes store, it comes at 256 kilobits? That's your encoding bit rate. Or you might have a really high quality MP3 at 320 kilobits. That's the encoding bit rate. Length of audio in seconds is the length of your song. So uh, Jody and I were discussing a magnificent work the other day called 4 minutes 33 seconds by John Cage. It's a work of genius, and it is a work of genius. If I was to download the MP3 of that, actually I could make it for myself, couldn't I? Really. If I was to <laughs> work out the size of that file, the length of the audio is 4 minutes and 33 seconds, which is uh, 6 fours are 24, 240 plus 33, 273 seconds. Okay, so just the time in seconds. And the bit rate that I'm encoding is whatever I encode at. Okay, so encoding bit rates for MP3 and M4A, are you aware that the, the MP3 has been, people have, uh, the people who make MP3 have told the world to stop using it? Why? There's a better format out there. And they've actually said our format, MP3, should stop being used you should use M4A. And they're saying it because M4A is a better encoder. So uh, the Fraunhofer Institute, who developed the MP3 codec in 1989 or so, have actually said, stop using MP3 and start using M4A because the encoder is better, which I think is quite funny. Um, so you can have a low quality encoding at 96 kilobits. Actually, you can go right down to 8 kilobit. And a very high quality recording at 320 kilobits. Now, can I point out something here? Notice, and this has been done deliberately and correctly, and this is a fight that I'm going to have with any examiner who gets it wrong. I've got a little b there on purpose. That little b represents a bit. When I've got a big b, it's a byte. And there is an eightfold difference in bits and bytes. And uh, the other presentation actually goes into that more detail. So lower uh, quality, 96 kilobit. Higher quality, 320 kilobit. Obviously, 320 kilobit will be a higher quality sound and a much bigger file. Clearly. Okay. Let's do the calculation. This one is easy, but there is one trick to it. My encoding bit rate times my length in seconds. So to get my encoding bit rate, is it already in kilobits? So the 8 there gets me to kilobytes. The 1024 gets me to megabytes. You'll notice that that's a different denominator to the other equations. Kilobits to kilobytes, kilobytes to megabytes. And that's a tricky one. And this time the encoding bit rate, yep, the denom denominator reflects that we are converting from kilobits to kilobytes. And notice also in my wording there, I have done it deliberately. Kilobits is a little k, kilobytes is a big k trying to get you that idea that changing um, from bits to bytes, you uh, go from little b to big b, actually, it should be. Okay, so let's have a look and see how it works. No, it's not. This is one of the questions. This is consolidating knowledge. I guarantee you, this will never turn up in an exam. It's unnecessarily complex. Video is never uncompressed. And I'm about to explain why. There is a really, really good reason for it. But just for the fun of it, let's go take a look and see what would happen if a video was uncompressed. There are a bunch of properties that we need to know about. Again, if you don't want to take notes here, don't worry. If you do want to take notes here, um, leave space and come back to it because I'm going to burn through this. We need to know the resolution of the video across and down. So if you're buying a Blu-ray, it comes in at 1080p, that's 1920 by 1080. Need to know the colour depth. Once again, if it's Blu-ray, we're talking 24 or 32-bit. 
We need to know the frame rate or the number of frames being displayed per second. Um, if you've watched the old Bugs Bunny cartoons, good fun. They come in at 12 frames per second, usually. Uh, if you're trying to generate the illusion of motion to trick your eyes into thinking a bunch of stills is animated, minimum is eight. If you're watching television, I don't know why this number, 29.97 frames per second. Don't ask me why, I don't know. If you're playing on your console, 60 frames per second. If you're playing on your PC, 60 to 120 to 240 frames per second. The length of your video is the next number you need in seconds. And there's more. The audio sample rate, this is 48 kilohertz for films usually. The audio sample quality, normally 16 bit. Number of discrete channels for audio, one for mono, two for stereo, six for 5.1, nine for 7.2. And this tends to make for very large files. But here's a question to ponder before we look at it. What unit would you calculate your answer in? Looking at all that stuff we've got to do for our calculation. Would you do it in megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes, petabytes? Yeah? So which one would you choose then? My, oh, I would choose either gigabytes or terabytes. Okay. Terabytes, by the way, is pretty big. So let's have a look. Here's our calculation. Let's imagine, oh good grief, resolution times colour depth times frame rate times length in seconds, plus the audio sample rate quality channels length in seconds again, will give us an answer in terabytes. Now, who's got the biggest hard drive here? This is a measuring contest. I've got a two terabyte hard drive at home. Can anyone beat that? Nick, what have you got? You do a lot of video. One of my computers has three. Has a three terabyte hard drive? That's, that's a lot of space. Well, let's calculate Lord of the Rings on Blu-ray. So I have the Lord of the Rings extended editions. Actually, I've got them on DVD, but I'm going to buy them on Blu-ray eventually. All three films in extended edition on Blu-ray, 11 and a half hours of Middle Earthy goodness. And let me tell you, that is a marathon to enjoy. Now, because it's Blu-ray, Glorious 1080p, that's 1920 by 1080, 32-bit colour, 24 frames per second, 48 kilohertz, 16-bit, 7.2 surround sound. Gorgeous. And you would agree, does anybody here disagree with this? Blu-ray is beautifully high quality. Does anyone want to disagree with that? No, you don't, Josh. I'm not disagreeing. I just want to let you know that <clears throat> I haven't even upgraded to Blu-ray. Well, what are you doing in this class? Yes. That's right. Oh. I'll buy you a PS3 for your birthday. I don't want one. Right, I won't buy you a PS3. Hello. Um, is this the one you said that we don't need to do? This is the one you don't need to do. I'm just going to show you as an example. <laughs> no, you don't need to. Well, you will because you're actually going to do this calculation, um, this exact calculation, as a comparison. But look at this, okay? So the numbers are huge. The, this is your calculation. Good luck to you. I'm not going to show that anymore. It's about 7.7 .7 terabytes. Now, 7.7 .7 terabytes, that's 7,000 gigabytes, that's 7 million megabytes. Nick's got the biggest hard drive in the, in the class, he's got 3 terabytes. That's 7.7. 7. Wait, what's the question? So the top bit, right, of this calculation, that's what yep. you do first and then you convert it? And then you do divide it by the denominator. It's a, it's a, oh, you divide. Yep. By that. Right, now, 7.7 um, .7 terabytes. Let's just think about this for a second, shall we? If I have a dual layer Blu-ray, what's the capacity of that Blu-ray? Does anybody know? Dual layer Blu-ray capacity is 50 gigabytes. 50 gigabytes, that's 0 0.005, I think, terabytes. Lord of the Rings extended edition comes out on six Blu-rays. Let's give it 300 gigabytes of space. We have just agreed that Blu-ray is gloriously high quality. And yet, from uncompressed 7.7 .7 terabytes down to 0.3 terabytes, that is a really impressive compression. And that's the point I want to make about video. Video is never uncompressed. You just don't have the room for it. And the compressor is absolutely superb at what it does. 
7.7 .7 terabytes, so 7,700 gigabytes, down to 300 gigabytes, and we call it high quality. Right, we now need to start concentrating again. Because I'm, this is going to turn up eventually. And this one is tricky because science. This is all about file sizes and transmission speeds. You don't, you, if you ask to calculate the size of the file first, it's a bit, bit cruel. It's unlikely to happen. Here is the trick. When calculating transmission speeds, always work in the same unit. When you're measuring distances, you don't add metres to kilometres because it doesn't work. You add kilometres to kilometres or metres to metres because then your units are the same. Thank you, installation failed. Always work in the same unit. So if I'm talking about a, size, a file size in megabytes, I'm talking about transmission in kilobits, I need to convert one to the other. Oh, and by the way, there is a big difference in the big B and little b. We've already told you about that. The big B is bytes, the little b is bits. The big B is eight times bigger than the little b. And we are sold another lie. Thank you, NBN. And I'll explain that one coming up. Because it frustrates me. OK. So transmission speeds. The important part here is always work in the same unit. The calculation is simple. The difficulty is the conversion to units. It's the file size divided by the transmission speed. It's really simple. And that should give me an answer in minutes or seconds. OK? So if my transmission speed is megabytes per second, my answer will come in seconds. If my transition speed is, transmission speed, sorry, is megabytes per minute, I'll get an answer in minutes, obviously. So just thinking about it, if I can download a 100 megabyte file at one, now that big B there is a byte, so if I'm downloading a 100 megabyte file at one megabyte per second, it will take 100 divided by 1 equals 100 seconds to download. Very, very simple calculation. If I was to change that um, 1 megabyte per second, change that big B for a little b to 1 megabit per second, it will take 8 times longer. It will take 8 minutes. But we'll come to that. Sorry, Jody, is there a question there? Yeah. What was that formula for? Transmission speeds. So if, I'm, so if I'm trying to, if I've got a file on my computer at home or in my Dropbox and I share it with you and you want to download it, it's 100 megabytes in size, how long will it take to download? Okay. okay. So now here's where the difficulty lies. And I've actually picked the numbers to make it relatively easy to do, relatively easy to do. Uh, if you get the, get the concept. So I've got my 128 megabyte file. Now that's, by this day and age, relatively small. But if I'm downloading it at 256 kilobits per second, that's fast, isn't it? 256 kilobits, that must be fast, right? No. Nah. Kilobits. Divide that 256 by eight, please. And that will get me to kilobytes and then divide it by 1,024, please, which will get me to megabytes, and you'll see the problem. So I've got to work in the same unit. Convert the 256 kilobits to megabytes, that is to say divide by 8, divide by 1,024, and, oh, look, 0 0.03 megabytes per second. That is slow. Very, very slow. Or I can convert my 128 megabytes to kilobits, which is a very big number. Either way, it's going to take nearly an hour and 10 minutes to download. We are sold a lie, NBN, thank you very much. 44 megabits per second, by the way. You've all probably got this as your typical evening download speed at your NBN connection. Has anyone got better than that, 44 megabits? Let's get honest here. What have you got? Seven megabits? No, I win. Seven megabytes. Okay, you're a little bit faster than the rest of us. Most of us say we have our blisteringly fast NBN connection of 44 megabits per second. 
Let's get real here, people. Divide that 44 by 8, please. It comes up at about 5 megabytes per second. We don't have blisteringly fast internet speeds in Australia. We really don't. We are sold a lie. And if you hear the ads on the radio about Vodafone, sorry, Vodafone, if you hear this, but you're selling a lie and you're, you need to be told about it. Vodafone says, and you can have your blisteringly fast 1.5 megabits per second. Really? Blisteringly fast? We are sold a lie because we buy it. We think the numbers are bigger, therefore it must be better. <laughs> if it was 44 megabytes per second, cheering. But we're not. Oh, look, that's the end of the presentation. Um, 